hi guys welcome back to my channel so today we will be reviewing the infamous ColourPop no filter foundation setting powder and press powder so if that's something that you have been interested in buying and you wanted to get my thoughts on it then stay tuned hi guys so welcome back today as you can tell from the title and the intro we will be reviewing the ColourPop no filter I think that's what it's called the ColourPop no filter foundation with the powders I got the no filter foundation I also got the no filter setting powder I got the one in translucent deep and I also got the press powder as you can tell I haven't used it yet it took it a longer than normal to get to me so that's why this is you it's going up kind of like late after other people have reviewed theirs, but I'm going to give you my opinion on it. So, and then I got the no filter sheer press powder. So I'm just going to put this on um, and then we're going to do a wear test for today as well. So I'm going to put it on and tell you guys how I like it. Give you my honest opinion from my first initial reaction and then... Um, Later on today, I will tell you how it wears throughout the day because we do have some errands and things to do today. So I'm going to just pin my hair back. I've already primed my face um, with primer. I used two primers today. I used my Tatcha, the Silk Canvas Filter Finish Protective uh, Primer. And <coughs> excuse me, I also used my, I actually used three. I'm trying to finish up my Urban Decay D-Slick uh, complexion primer as well. So I used a little bit of this. Uh, this helps me not get as oily because I have really oily skin. And then I used a little bit of the Becker Evermatte Poreless Priming uh, Primer. As you can tell, both of these are almost finished and I'm trying to finish it. Um, before one, I purchased another one. And then two, um, I have some other primers that I need to use. So I want to finish what I have first before I open up another one. So these are almost done. But let's get right into it. So the color that I am in, in the ColourPop No Filter Foundation, I actually used on the computer on their website, if you can't match your color, they let you match it by your color and other brands. So I matched my color for ColourPop's foundation based on my MAC um, foundation color, which is NW50. So they match me with Deep Dark 195. Just from looking at it, this is my first time actually opening it and looking at it since I got it in the mail. Um, just from looking at it in the bottle, it does look kind of light and orange, but we're going to go with it and try to make it work. And then I did the translucent deep, which I've heard this doesn't really have like a color to it. So that should be fine. And then the no filter um pressed powder let's see how that looks i'm hoping it works i mean if it works it is good uh for all three of these plus shipping and handling it was like less than 30 bucks so imagine if it's really good and it keeps up with the higher end foundations i mean this is a good um it's a good match i mean i swatched the pressed powder and it doesn't look too bad so We'll see. And it looks pretty good here. So let's just get right into it. I'm actually going to color correct a little bit because I do have some spots and discoloration. I am going to color correct with the matte prep and prime pencil and a peach luster. Um, I normally don't always color correct, but I want it to start. They say it's better, uh, foundation application so we'll see how that goes I feel like I gotta do a lot of clicks to get this stuff out like come on ain't nobody got time to play I don't understand Linda why this stuff not coming out okay I see it now it's coming out Alright, so 
gonna color correct a little bit over here around here I have a little spots here um, that I don't care for little breakouts and bumps that you know whatevs but I'm gonna do it and fix it up I'm not gonna put a lot cuz I don't really need a lot but just to even out some stuff, you know? Little spots. And if, you, if you're if you not aware, you color correct. Like if you have like dark spots and different things of that sort, you can color correct. Like you use, I don't know, it depends on your skin tone. So it depends on what type of um, concealer you would use to color correct. So for my skin tone, orange obviously can cancel out those dark spots before I put on foundation so I'm just going to blend that out on my skin just so it's an even finish when I put on the foundation Which, like I said before, I normally don't color correct. So we'll see how this goes. But I did want to start trying it out and see. Because sometimes when I do put on my foundation, you can still see... Um, well, most of my foundations are um, full coverage. So you can't really see like the discoloration in my skin. Like the uneven skin tone. But... On my normal day, like at work, where I don't, I'm either not wearing foundation or I am um, wearing a light foundation, a medium to, well, normally it's medium. I don't think I have any light foundations, but a medium coverage foundation, uh, you could still see some of the spots, which I don't mind. In all honesty, I don't care, but, you know, the days that you want to be snatched, you do. On everything that looks snatched. Alright, so I'm going to start with my brows. I always start with my brows first. As per normal. And I'm not going to go step by step. I'm going to let you guys know what I'm using. But for the most part, I'm just going to put my makeup on how I normally do. Because ultimately, this video is just to talk about the foundation. The actual foundation and not anything else. And if you guys do start wanting to see more in-depth videos on how I apply my makeup, um, I can record that. But this video, not for that. So anyway, I'm doing my brows like how I normally do my brows. Which I have been, um, I'm challenging myself to use the makeup that I have before I purchase something else. So... Remember I was telling you guys that I switched from my Anastasia Beverly Hills brow pencil to the Sephora one. Needless to say, last time I went to Sephora, they were out in the store. Well, here in, in this part of Charlotte, like the nearest Sephora is far, so they only have the ones that's inside the JCPenney's. And that one that I went to, they did not have that color and they were out of stock online, the color that I needed. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I went back to my Anastasia that I had at home just so, you know, I could finish it up because I had stopped using that one because one of the Sephora color one was lighter and I found that I like that lighter color better. It looked better. And then two, I just like the pencil better. So I went back using that one. Sephora then got them in stock. I had got the email. Um... And I don't know what happened. I just forgot to order it. And then the next thing you know, next time I went on the app, sold out again. So I was like, you know what? I have two, well, I have this pencil that I have to finish. And then I still have a whole nother pencil that I haven't touched of the Anastasia one. And I was like, I'm not going to spend money to buy a pencil because I like that pencil when I have two pencils at home. So I'm, I was like, I'm going to stop buying makeup especially if it's not for like 
a video purpose like this one this one was okay because like i said the foundation wasn't expensive it was cheap um compared to what we normally spend on foundation so that one wasn't a problem but i was like i'm not gonna buy anything else i have a good amount of makeup that anybody would need rather i think i have more than enough so i'm really not gonna buy things unless they run out and i need it so like i said like i'm trying to finish up those primers that i have and um use the ones i have here like i have a drawer of extras of like things that i really really like and just in case the brand discontinues it like i had a backup so like i have extra lip pencils and different things of that sort or lip liners and stuff so i'm gonna use what i got not unless it's like limited edition and like i feel like i have to have it but Nothing has really come out that caught my eye like that where I'm just like, I have to have it. I'm like, I have stuff at home that's either equivalent to it or I just honestly don't need it. So I'm challenging myself because I noticed like I literally forgot. I was looking in my drawer for something and I found a palette that I had not used at all. Like, since I brought it, I haven't used it, haven't cracked it open, still fresh, brand new. And I totally forgot I had it. So, I'm like, what else do I have in this drawer? And then that's when I found the other Anastasia Beverly Hills pencil. I found all this other stuff and I'm just like, alright, Nikki, like, let's be realistic. You don't need no more makeup. So, I'm not going to buy anything else makeup related unless... Unless that's the clause. I ran out of it and I don't have something of like that same sort. So let's say like I'm at the end of my Smashbox 24 hour waterproof concealer. Which I love that concealer. Like that concealer I can honestly say I wear on a daily basis. If I'm wearing makeup like I wear I wore it out. That's what I wear to work um, when I'm not wearing foundation. Even when I am wearing foundation I'm, I use that concealer. But um, that's the one I use on the regular. I'm running out of it. Like, literally scraping the bottle for the rest of it. And I have other concealers. Granted, I love that one. It's the perfect match or whatever. But I have other concealers that I could either mix with the two to get my perfect shade or something. But I have concealers that I can use. So, I haven't repurchased it no matter how bad I want to because it's like perfect I don't even got to work or think about it like it just works but I haven't repurchased it for that simple fact because I want to challenge myself and then one um I got goals and things that I want to do so I don't want to spend money on stuff that I don't need if that makes sense I mean granted like you're gonna purchase things sometimes that you may not need but I'm trying to trick my mind into not doing it so that is what I'm going to do so I'm not buying makeup unless I really really need it like there's nothing else in my drawer and I'm completely out of it or I'm completely about to run out of it and I have to replace it other than that the girl is not buying it so right now I'm just carving out my brows like I normally do. Some people I know um, do their brows after their foundation. For me, I prefer to do it this way. It's not, um, it's up to you, it's your preference. The reason why I prefer doing it is because I do use a lighter foundation to carve out my brows at the bottom. So for it to all blend and not look harsh, I like to do it before my foundation because then when I put on my foundation I sort of kind of go over that area and then everything just blends seamlessly so that's why I do it that way but again everything is your preference makeup is your preference what you wear is your preference what you eat is your preference you do you boo that's what I tell people just because I do it or somebody else does it doesn't mean you have to do it like one, I haven't been doing makeup all my life. 
I taught myself and I watched YouTube videos, watch my mom, and that's how I learned how to do it and I practiced. And things that I see other people do, um, I try it out for myself. If it works for me, it works and then I keep it. If not, I sort of kind of tweak it to what works for me and then I have my own way of doing it. And that's what it's all about. Like, you put your own twist to things and then, you know, you find your niche. And that's what I do. So I just prefer to do it this way. If you prefer to do it another way, then you prefer to do it that way. But this is just the way that I like to do it. And I feel comfortable doing. And this is the way that I like the way it looks. So. That is that. And this is, looking at my brows, I'm like, this is why I prefer the Sephora pencil, or not even prefer the Sephora, well, the ultimate reason why I prefer the uh, Sephora pencil is because one is cheaper than the Anastasia one, and if you do your brows every day, you know um, that pencil runs out super fast, so um, with as many times as I was rebuying the pencil, Instead of spending 20 bucks on a pencil, why not spend $10 or $11 on a pencil? So, that's what I like to do. So, that's why I prefer that one. But I'm thinking, even if I had to, or say they discontinue my color, and I have to find another pencil, um, I think I could just go one color up in the Anastasia one. Because, again, there's nothing wrong with that one. I like that one. I still like that one. It's just, I was trying to find a cheaper version to it. So... Which, that's how I came across the Sephora one. So, that one works. But I think if I just go a shade lighter, then I'll be fine. So, first initial reaction, I just pumped some of the foundation on my hand. And as you can see, it is super watery. Like, it's super watery. But whatever. I'm going to take a brush to distribute it across my face this does look sort of kind of like I feel like I could have went darker but we are gonna see how it works cuz it may oxidize some foundations do oxidize but to me this looks kind of orange and I'm hoping it's not because it's not like you can go inside of a store and flip and return it so Let's see what we're working with. But it may be fine because, well, now that I think about it, my NARS, uh, I think it's not considered a foundation. It's like a tint, a tinted moisturizer or whatever. But it comes out this orange, but then it oxidizes to my skin color. So we'll see if that happens. So far, so good. It blends pretty well. Um, it doesn't look horrible. It actually blends in with my neck nicely. And if you didn't know, like, your face, most people's face is a different color from their neck and the rest of their body. Like, you have different skin tones or whatever. But when matching your foundation, you want to blend with your neck. Like, you don't want your face to be one color, then your neck to be another color. And then, you know, your feet a whole nother color. Like... You try to get your face to match your neck and then, you know, if you do spray tan your body or whatever, I don't, I don't need to, but it all depends on you and your preference, but yeah, so that was about one and a half pumps and I want to say this is a medium coverage foundation. I'm going to do another half a pump on my, it wasn't like, well, it may have been a full pump. I don't know. I'm going to do another one just to cover up some spots that I see it didn't cover so well, like on the side of my face. Um, I still feel like I look a little too orange for my liking, but we will see how, um, it does with once I 
conceal my face and put a uh, highlight and contour. We'll see. But so far, I mean, it feels good. I can say that it feels light on my face. Like, it doesn't feel like I have on makeup. You know how some foundations you feel super cakey and it feels like you have makeup on your face. And then most of the day you're like, okay, I'm ready to get this crap off. This doesn't feel that way. All right, after putting that, I can say it is buildable. This is a buildable foundation, and it's lightweight. So I can understand why it was watery when I pumped it out. And in all honesty, if I wear this again, more likely I am going to just use one pump because I don't really, when I wear foundation on the norm, I don't um, like do cake face, if that makes sense. So it should be fine. I'm taking this Morphe blender. It's like it's sort of kind of like a beauty, booty, beauty blender. But I like it. Um, I'm actually doing a haul video, and you'll see. Uh, I brought these to try it out. I actually saw Jacqueline Hill using it, and I was like, I want what like this is what got me this part of the beauty blender because it like gets under my under eye real good and i was like oh i want to try that and they were like super cheap way cheaper than a beauty blender i could tell you that much so i tried it out loved it and i actually ordered mine from ulta ulta has them but the morphe uh website does have it as well so so far not gonna lie, this foundation looks good. So, what I'm gonna do now is, since this is a ColourPop foundation, what I've been doing since I've been running out of my Smashbox one, I have been taking a little bit of the Smashbox, putting it directly under my eye, which is my color, and then taking the ColourPop one and going under it. But I'm not gonna do that today, um, only because like literally I am scraping the bottle of this one. So I would prefer to use this for work. I'm going to take my NARS Creamy Radiant Radiant Creamy Concealer in the color um, Hazelnut. I'm going to use that first and then right underneath it I'm going to use my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the color Deep Dark 58. I actually had another one in Deep Dark 52 and I thought this would work for me, but this one actually makes me look kind of ashy. Like it's too light, like it doesn't have a golden undertone, so I don't really care for it, if that makes any sense. So, yeah. So I'm just going to use this to conceal. And the funny thing is when I ordered it looking online, um, the ColourPop concealer, I actually brought this uh, Deep Dark 58 one to contour with. Let's just say it is not a contour shade. It is literally like my skin tone. Like it can blend in with my skin. So needing to say that one out the door. Maybe I could probably do a soft contour with it, but it ain't hitting on nothing. So what I've been doing is either sometimes I do it with my beauty blender or if I'm doing it and I don't have on foundation, I normally uh, blend this in with a brush. So I'm just going to go in with my, I can't call it a beauty blender, my sponge and I'm going to tap this out. And does anybody else make funny faces when they're doing their makeup? Like I can't help it. I'm like, yo, if somebody were to watch me do my makeup every day and catch me on a good day I'm singing dancing and doing God knows what else that looks nice it blends in it's a little nice little soft highlight I'm not going super super bright in the highlight because I'm not doing like it's a light day today like I'm not doing much I don't want to be like too beat in jeans and slides I just want to you know look put together so I normally do that and that is setting nice 
it is actually setting well with the foundation so that's a good thing because I've had some things that I tested out and I'm like okay those two just do not go together so I'm actually going to try setting it with this okay well that sucks I guess in the mail um this popped open so what it's supposed to not like let this stuff get all over the place it did so yeah that sucks but I'm gonna work with what I got and that's funny because it didn't the sticker didn't um I don't know I guess it was in the packaging um I just by looking at the color of this I don't think I'm gonna like it for my only my under eye only because this is dark compared to like if you look at this this looks like a well you can't let's see if you can see this all right if you look at this this looks like a cinnamon color and normally when I set my under eye which I think every melanin girl does we set our under eye with like a yellow powder so I'm gonna first you know what, let me first try setting it with this one, with the ColourPop one. I'm going to give it a try because you never know. And then if it doesn't, then I'll go back over it with my Sasha Buttercup powder. So I'm just going to take like a regular little cosmetic sponge, dip it in. I don't know why, but I prefer, I know most people put it with the same beauty sponge, but I don't like mixing my powders with my liquid, so I just use these. And it legit looks like cinnamon under my eye. <laughs> It did nothing. Well, it did what I thought it was going to do. So, it sets pretty nicely. It feels nice. It actually feels like my Sasha Buttercup one. Um, but as you can see, it didn't brighten up and do anything. It literally looks like my skin. So, I don't feel bad and I'm not mad at it only because... I can literally use this to set the rest of my face. So I can use this to set my foundation and stuff. Um, I'm going right now back over with my Sasha Buttercup. So I can use that powder to set the rest of my face and my foundation, but I'm not going to use it going forward setting my under eye because I like that to look a little bright as you can see. And I normally just pat that in there so I don't get any creasing underneath my eye. And then I think it's going to be perfect. Hopefully it does what I think it does. And if it does, I think it's going to be perfect to sweep away the Sasha Buttercup. If it works the way I think it's going to work, then I'm going to like it. So, because normally after I set this, I sweep. I don't let it sit, I don't bake for long, and I sweep it away from my face. And yeah, it's doing what I want it to do. It's not looking crazy, and I can let it legit set the rest of my face. So yep, I like this powder so far. Now the test is, can it last all day? So right now it is, I'm putting it on and it's 11.55, so 12 o'clock practically. So we'll probably come back on later tonight. Um, and we will be outside. And it's a perfect day to try it because one, it's been hot. It's balls in Charlotte. And two, it's raining today. So it's hot and it's like wet outside. So... If my makeup holds up today, then you know this is no joke. So I'm just contouring a little bit just to bring warmth back to my face. Again, I'm not trying to do the most today. I'm just, you know, trying to look a little extra but not too extra. So that's that. And... I meant to ask, how was everybody's 4th of July? Ours was really cool and calm. Um, we, 
this is our first year here so we are still learning as we go and we learned that fireworks are flipping illegal here in North Carolina so the ones that go up in the air we are used to you know buying fireworks with our family and it didn't matter what it's just like maybe like the really really huge ones you're not allowed to um purchase which they don't sell in Florida, unless like you buy them illegally. But you're still able to do your own at your house or wherever you are at the park or whatever. You're still able to do your own fireworks. Not here. It is illegal for you to do fireworks. The ones that go up in the air. Any type. Like I think you could do the sparklers. But any other type that goes up in the air, like it's illegal. Like that night, we heard cops. Like people were doing them. And... Next thing you know, we hear cops. Like, you would get ticket. You would get a ticket. You would get fined. Bro, they are illegal. So, I just warmed up my face a little bit with the contour. And I contoured, I'm sorry. With this is the Black Ups Contouring Powder in the color 04. Uh, it doesn't say it. I think, I believe when I brought it, it was like a medium, a dark and a medium. And I just got this one, um, for me. And I like it, um, considering that I don't do heavy contouring. Cause, I, I mean, I just don't like it. I just like to warm up my face a little bit. So you can sort of kind of say that I bronze with the contouring a little bit. But I like the way it comes out. So I feel like this looks really, really nice. It doesn't look cakey. The only thing that I haven't tried to put on was this no filter sheer press powder. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to do what I normally do. So normally after I set my under eyes, I put that contour powder on and I set my foundation just to blend everything seamless together. Before I do that, I, I'm actually going to put on blush. I normally put on blush. I was going to use the blush that I had out, but... I normally on when I go to work depending on the day I normally use this raisin blush by Mac it's super light it's nothing crazy but when I want you to see my blush like see it when I tell you these Anastasia Beverly Hills blushes they are no joke so this one is the blush the blush kit ingredient and I normally use um what is this color this is vegas so vegas is a nice little it's this one right here i normally use this one i try using this one and this one is super dark like i feel like i could semi contour in this in a way but this one barely shows up i could probably bronze in this a little bit but i like this one so far in this set i have been using this one and it's been working I have no complaints and it is very pigmented I go in this with a very like you can see that and I barely put the brush in there um I go in here with the light hand because if not hunty you will be looking like a clown trust me I made the mistake and I did it learn from my mistake because it was a flipping mission trying to fix it. And does anybody else keep their stuff in the packaging? Depending on if the box is super pretty, I keep the packaging. If not, if it gets annoying, I throw it away. But for some apparent reason for that one, I kept the box. For most of my eyeshadow palettes, I keep the box. But for everything else, I throw it away. So now I'm just going to go over my entire face with this powder. Um... First reaction, when I put my brush in it, it did get kind of messy. Like the powder is spreading everywhere. But for the most part, that doesn't bother me. I don't care. Powders normally tend to get messy. So I'm not worried about it. So I just set the rest of my face with this. And it feels like a normal pressed powder. There's nothing um, to it and crazy about it. So, I'm going to spray. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera, finish my eyes, and then come back on, spray my face with um, my Mario Badescu and go over it one more time with the powder. That's what I normally do. Just when I spray my face, it takes away this powder. Like this looks powder. When I come back, you'll see um, how the Mario Badescu brings like hydration back into my face. And then I just set it one more time. Again, because I am oily, I set my face a lot just so throughout the day I don't get as oily and the oils don't come through my pores. So I'm going to go finish my eyes off camera and I'll be right back. Alright, so now I am back with a simple eye look. I popped on some lashes and that was it. So, now like I said before, I will spray my face like I normally do. Once I'm done with eyeshadow, I put on lashes, do whatever I need to do. What I did not do, which I'm glad I looked up, was normally um, once I put on my foundation and everything, I go back and I sort of kind of like fade out my eyebrows so they don't look so harsh and fake. If that makes any sense. In the front. I want it to look. You know. A little natural. Alright. So that is done. Done. And now I'm going to spray my face. As you can see. I use a lot of this. Um, the facial spray with aloe herbs. And rose water. By Mario Badescu Skincare Line. I normally drench my face in that and as you can see like my face looks super wet but I promise you it just helps melt that makeup in there and it basically so how my theory on how it works is when you have oily skin and you put all the powders to dry your skin out your skin is thinking that you know it needs to produce more oil so that's why i think most of the oils try to like push itself out so by me spraying that spray on my face it's putting hydration back in my face where my face doesn't feel like it needs to produce those oils to moisturize my face and then you know it gets its hydration and then i set it again with powder and we're good to go. My face got the hydration it needs and then it'll be back to normal just producing its normal oils and not extra oil. The girl doesn't want to be oily. And I normally don't take a whole bunch of powder after that again because I don't want to look powdery. That's the whole purpose of spraying my face. So what I do is I tap a little bit on there which I'm using the pressed powder. And whatever's left on my brush I just use that for my entire face. Literally. Like I don't add no more at all move that out the way and the girl is done this is it this is the final look i like to think um it came out pretty good so far so good i don't see um while i was putting on my makeup and doing my ma my eye makeup I didn't get oily, which I normally don't once I set, once I put the powders and set my foundation. So that's a plus. That means it's working like the normal foundations that I normally use. Powders felt good. Makeup, even after putting on all that powder, highlighting and doing all that other stuff, my face still feels pretty light. It doesn't feel heavy. Like I have a whole bunch of stuff on my face, which that is something that I look for when I'm purchasing a foundation or a powder. So that is a plus. Um... The only thing that, I mean, if I did, which I did initially buy it for the purposes of setting my under eye, I could have very well just gone, gotten the, either the full translucent powder of their, um, setting powder or the banana powder because they do have one, but I got the dark one and I'm not disappointed because it is my skin tone and I can set the rest of my foundation and my face with it. So the money's not going to go to waste. The no filter pressed powder, it works very well just the same. So I have no complaints so far. So what I am going to do is go throughout my day doing what I normally do, running the errands that we have to run. And then later on tonight, I'm going to give it to about like maybe 9 o'clock. Um, depending on how tired I get, but I'm going to try to come back on here by like nine o'clock to give you my final review on how it wore throughout the day. But so far it looks good. Like I have no complaints whatsoever. I thought it was going to be a little orangey, but it wasn't. It actually matched my neck perfectly fine. 
and um yeah match the rest of my body as you can see it's not a huge difference and if you notice like the rest of my body has like a orange and yellow undertone to it not so much of a red so it worked pretty good I don't like I said I, I like it I think it's worth it it's not expensive so especially if you're just getting into makeup and you're just playing around with makeup and you don't want to either you want it to try a different brand that's not a drugstore brand I would definitely recommend ColourPop so you can just try that things out they also do have other products they have lip products speaking of lip products I didn't put anything on my lip and since we're doing ColourPop I got my Ultra Glossy Lip Ellery X Colourpop in Netta. And, oh, I forgot this was a color. I totally forgot that. I thought I was going to be able to put it on without a liner. And that is a no-go. You see what happens when you're not prepared? Prepared. Um, I have a liner back here somewhere. Let's see. Yep, I do. I have my Kylie, as you can see, it's almost gone. My Kylie Cosmetics True Brown K. Which, this is the brown liner that I use all the time. Uh, I'm just going to line my lips real quick. I honestly thought it was going to be like my Rihanna one that I could just pop on and go. Which is in my purse. But I forgot Ellery came out with two. One is like that. I thought it was the one that I grabbed. But this is the one that's a color. Which I normally put over a lipstick or with a liner like this. And I'm good to go. All right, we look a little better. I normally will put more liner than that, but it's sort of kind of hard after you um, put lipstick on or put a gloss on or whatever because it's mixing in with the pencil. But whatever. So, um, yeah. I'm going to go throughout the day, run the errands, like I said, before I come back. But so far, so good. I like all three of them. I don't think it was a waste of money. I actually think I could get a good use out of it. This may be, because it's so light, um, this may then be something that I start wearing during the week when I go to work. Um, but other than that, I'm going to see how it wears throughout the day. And then I'll catch you guys up later. Alright guys, so we are back. It has been about... We did our makeup at like 12. So it has been 9 hours. A little over 9 hours. It's currently 9.16. And as you can see, I am a little oily. Um, I did have to blot once today prior to this. And that was around like 6 o'clock. Um, I did notice that in my T-zone, which is my worst area, it was around here and here. Um, I did get oily. My nose in particular, for some apparent reason, I really, really get oily on my nose. So I blotted that around 6 and then I haven't blotted again there and then this is the final result. So I would say my final review of the products, I like the Pro Filter Foundation, the Press Powder, and the um, Setting Powder. I just know for me, if I'm going to wear it all day, I would probably take other measures like how I normally do um, on a longer day, which is... Um, putting setting power power setting powder um on top of my face prior to applying the foundation and then powdering my face a little more but also me getting oily throughout the day it's normal for me I rarely find a foundation where I really don't have to blot at all I normally do blot throughout the day so it doesn't bother me none and not only that like I feel like sometimes a little oil is necessary like it looks like a like a fresh normal face it's not out of control so I would suggest that you get it it's cheap 
it's nice coverage full coverage looks pretty good matches very well and it does what it says it's a filter it looks good it covered up most of my blemishes um even though i did color correct but it looked good i don't have a problem with it i do plan to use these products again so they won't go to waste inside my makeup collection so my final thoughts is definitely try it out definitely purchase it i think it's a good buy it is totally worth the money it is cheap i think the foundation retails for 12 dollars and the pressed powders around like eight or nine dollars like i said for all three plus shipping and handling i spent less than 30 dollars which is not bad because normally a setting powder alone is like 20 or 30 dollars so the fact that i got all three plus shipping and handling for that amount I think was a great steal. So that is my thoughts on the ColourPop No Filter Foundation Setting Powder and Press Powder. Hopefully this helps someone. And I guess I will see you beautiful people next time. Have a great day.